It's my birthday today, so please allow me a little more than my usual self-indulgence. If it's your birthday too then I would like to congratulate you on choosing the 8th of June. We share our birthday with Kanye West, so according I am wishing you all a day filled with joy and, um, dragon energy. I work in an industry where it's considered unwise to shout out the age you are as you get older, so may I first of all shout sod that and tell you I am 45 today. If that hinders my job prospects, whatever. I run away with the circus where they still employ women over 40 as part of the freak show, as long as they can double up as a human cannonball on a Friday because that's Zippo's day off. Recently, I was out with a friend who has had great success in his show business career this year. Are you getting lots more attention from women now? I asked him. Yes. He said, then wailed, but they're all 45-year-old divorcees. I reminded him of my own age and marital status. He spluttered and coughed his apologies and flattered me, I didn't mean you. You're hot. In other words, you're an alright 45-year-old. It's those other ones, coming over here with their bingo wings and jam recipes. I wasn't insulted. What I suggested to him was bad too. I had implied that he wasn't attractive to women until he'd got a bit of fame. Happily he was too mortified to pick up on that. Campaigner Chidero Egaru reveals the hashtag saggy boobs matter hashtag has prevented young women from having plastic surgery I like getting older. It's a reassuring reminder that I am alive and still at the party. I do notice I've changed a little, I admire hanging baskets outside pubs before I go in them. When I see very young women in heels and short skirts at night, I worry about whether they are chilly. The downside is knowing that if you died, it wouldn't be regarded as quite as tragic as if you were in your 20s. Imagine, what happened to Shappy. She got eaten by a lion. Awful. How old was she? 45. Oh. Wine gum? You can't help but be conscious of your age on TV. Before I went into I'm a celebrity, I will confess to seeking out a highly recommended plastic surgeon for a bit of help. The first thing my partner at the time had said when I agreed to do the show was, but people will see you without makeup on. I really don't think that's good for your career, I know. I know. I had three years of this sort of thing from him and he was eventually sent away to live in a farm. My confidence eroded somewhat by my silver-tongued cavalier, this can happen over time without you realizing it's happening. Off I trotted to Harley Street. I just wanted Botox and fillers, nothing dramatic. What a strange thing it was to walk into a fancy building, give my details to the receptionist and plonk myself down on a glossy chair, waiting for a consultation on how I could alter my face to pretend I haven't lived for as long as I have. Before you can actually have the work done, this clinic makes you have an expensive consultation. Just a way to make more money, I thought. I was getting fillers, after all, not a new head. The consultation room was huge, with shiny white walls, floors and furniture. Everything looked super this will how your face will look. Smooth. So, the softly spoken Indian doctor said, why are you here? 
I told him I was going on a TV program where I'd be filmed at every angle, 24 hours a day and I wasn't allowed to wear makeup. I left out the part about my boyfriend thinking I should hide my bare face from humanity. The man was a cosmetic surgeon, after all, not the loose women panel. He gave me a mirror, look in here, please, and tell me how much you like your face out of 10. Not how beautiful you think you are, but how much you like it. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau meets with British Prime Minister Theresa May at the G7 Leaders Summit in La Molbe, Quebec. Brexit Secretary David Davis, Wright, and International Trade Secretary Liam Fox leave 10 Downing Street. Prime Minister Theresa May held an emergency Brexit cabinet meeting in an attempt to resolve tensions over the UK's Irish border plan. Britain's Prime Minister Theresa May welcomes Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to Downing Street. British fashion designer and environmental campaigner, Dame Vivian Westwood delivers an anti-fracking letter to 10 Downing Street in London. New images issued by the Grenfell Tower Inquiry of the Kitchen in Flat 16 where the fire started on June 14 last year. 71 people were killed after the fire tore through the housing block in Kensington. Bishop of Southwark Christopher Chesson and members of the public attend a commemoration service on the first anniversary of the London Bridge terror attack. Britain held a national minute of silence on June 3, one year on from the London Bridge terror attack that killed eight people and injured dozens more. William Buick Riding Massa celebrates crossing the line and winning the Investec Derby race on Derby Day at Epsom Downs. Traffic passes anti-Brexit signs on the County Derry slash London Derry Northern Ireland and County Donegal in the Irish Republic. Northern Ireland could be given joint EU and UK status and a buffer zone on its border with the Republic under new plans being drawn up by David Davis, according to reports. Eleanor Crossy Malone displays an abortion pill packet after taking a pill as abortion rights campaign group Rosa, reproductive rights against oppression, sexism and austerity distribute abortion pills from a touring bus in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Flouting Northern Irish governmental laws which forbid the use of abortion pills the group are also protesting outside offices belonging to the main political parties in the province. Women in Northern Ireland have been prosecuted for buying abortion pills over the internet and it is illegal for a woman to have an abortion unless in special circumstances unlike the rest of the United Kingdom. The Republic of Ireland voted in favour of pro-choice last week in a referendum. West Midlands police officers carrying out scene searches near to where a 15-year-old boy was fatally stabbed in Wolverhampton. A view at Westminster Abbey from the medieval Triforium that is hosting an exhibition in London. The Queen's Diamond Jubilee Galleries set more than 16 meters, 52 feet, above the abbey floor in the medieval Triforium, will open to the public for the first time on June 11, displaying over 300 treasures from the abbey's collection which will tell the rich thousand-year history of the institution at Westminster Abbey. People enjoy the hot weather on Bournemouth Beach during Bank Holiday Monday in Dorset. Chris Ashton of the Barbarians scores against England at Twickenham. Lightning strikes over the City of London. Rory McIlroy took the clubhouse lead into round three of the BMW PGA Championship at Wentworth. 
Alistair Cook batting against Pakistan during the first test match of the summer at Lord's Cricket Ground, London. Home Secretary Sajid Javid speaking at the annual conference of the Police Federation of England and Wales at the International Convention Centre in Birmingham. Felix, too, sits next to messages and flowers left in Manchester, ahead of the Manchester Arena National Service of Commemoration at Manchester Cathedral to mark one year since the Manchester attack. Marcio and Andrea Gomez, parents of Logan Gomez, arrive for a commemoration hearing at the opening of the inquiry into the Grenfell Tower disaster, in London. Brackley Town celebrate after winning the Buildbase FA Trophy final after they beat Bromley on penalties at Wembley Stadium. Actress, Meghan Markle, reaches Prince Harry at the altar in St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle for their wedding service. Workers from the Covent Garden branch of TGI Fridays on the picket line outside the restaurant as they strike in a dispute over pay. Members of Unite are taking action on Friday in a row over tips and payment of the minimum wage. A police officer talks to a homeless man in Windsor ahead of the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Wing Commander John Butcher, commanding officer of 617 Squadron, left, jokes with Britain's last surviving dambuster, squadron leader George Johnny Johnson, during an event to mark the 75th anniversary of the dambusters raids, at RAF Cunningsby. The Royal Air Force Battle of Britain Memorial Flight was hoping to fly one of the two remaining Avril Lancaster bombers over the Derwent and Lady Bower reservoirs, but high winds prevented the aircraft from taking off. 2018 marks the 100th anniversary of the formation of the RAF and the 75th anniversary of the 617 Squadron Dambusters operation. The Dam Buster Raids, Operation Chastise was an attack on German dams on 16 the 17th of May 1943 by Royal Air Force No. 617 Squadron, using an innovative bouncing bomb, which skimmed on the surface of the reservoir before hitting the dam wall and exploding. President of Turkey Recep Tayyip Erdogan speaks as British Prime Minister Theresa May listens during a press conference after their meeting at 10 Downing Street. Erdogan is in the UK for a three-day visit, which includes a closing lecture at the Tat Liddell Forum in Oxford, an audience with the Queen and talks with Theresa May. The funeral cortege of Alfie Evans goes past Everton's Goodison Park ground in Liverpool. Doctors at Alda Hay Children's Hospital in Liverpool stopped providing life support treatment to Alfie last month after his parents, Tom Evans and Kate James, lost two rounds of fights in the High Court, Court of Appeal, Supreme Court and European Court of Human Rights. Daisy May Cooper, the winner of the Female in a Comedy Award for this country, with her BAFTA. Thousands of union members march through central London demanding a new deal for workers, in an event organized by the Trades Union Congress, TUC. Jeremy Corbyn with shipbuilding apprentices at the Fairfield Shipbuilding Museum in Govan. During a speech here he called for Navy shipbuilding contracts to stay in the UK. Dominic Chilcott, right, British ambassador in Turkey, hands over a letter of apology from the UK government to Libyan dissident Abdul Hakim Belaj, at the British consulate, in Istanbul. Abdul Hakim Belaj and his wife, Fatima Boudka, allege they were detained in Southeast Asia in 2004 and sent to Libya to be interrogated by the regime of late dictator Muammar Gaddafi. 
Britain acknowledged Thursday that its intelligence agents played a role in the kidnapping and torture of an opponent of the late Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, a rare admission of wrongdoing by British spies. The coffin of former House of Commons Speaker Lord Michael Martin, followed by his widow Mary, is carried from St Aloysius in Glasgow after his funeral. The former Labour MP died on Sunday April 29 after a short illness at the age of 72. Mayor of London Sadiq Khan and Labour MP Heidi Alexander Ms Alexander is standing down from Parliament after being confirmed as London's Deputy Mayor for Transport, replacing current Deputy Mayor Val Shawcross. Arsene Wenger bids farewell to Arsenal Football Club and the stadium he helped to build in more ways than one. It was Wenger's final home game of after 22 years in charge. Arsenal sent him off with a 5-0 victory over Burnley. Manchester City celebrate with the trophy after winning the Premier League title. Anti-independence supporters wave union Jack flags as thousands of demonstrators march in support of Scottish independence through the streets of Glasgow. Prime Minister Theresa May with her supporters during a visit to Wandsworth Town Hall, where the Conservative Party retained control of Wandsworth Council in the local elections. Jeremy Corbyn outside a polling station in Islington after voting in the local elections. A memorial to George Michael outside his house in Highgate, North London. George Michael's family have since asked fans to remove their tributes from outside the late singer's former homes for the sake of his neighbours. Lester Morrisman during May Day celebrations at Bradgate Park in Newtown Linford, Leicestershire. Sajid Javid outside the Home Office in Westminster after he was appointed as the new Home Secretary. Celtic celebrate after winning they confirmed winning the Scottish Premiership by beating rivals Rangers 5-0 at Celtic Park. Peel released balloons outside Alderhey Children's Hospital in Liverpool, following the death on Saturday morning of Alfie Evans, who was being treated at the hospital. The 23-month-old died at 2.30 a.m., parents Kate James and Thomas Evans said on Facebook. The youngster was at the center of a legal battle over his treatment that touched hearts around the world. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, right, speaks with British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, left, and Belgian Foreign Minister Didier Reinders, centre, during a meeting of the North Atlantic Council at NATO headquarters in Brussels. NATO held its last major meeting in its old headquarters, with talks focused on strained ties with Russia, a fresh peace effort in Afghanistan and a new training mission for Iraq. A protester wearing a mask depicting Facebook's CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, flanked by two protesters wearing angry emoji masks protest outside Portcullis House in central London. Facebook's CTO Mike Shropfor appeared in front of British members of Parliament on the Digital, Culture, Media and Sport Select Committee in the wake of allegations that information on millions of its users was misused. Members of the military work in the Maltings shopping area, close to the bench where Russian former double agent Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia were found critically ill seven weeks ago. The area around the bench where the couple collapsed is one of nine sites to be cleaned in an operation that is likely to take several months. A statue in honor of the first female suffragette Millicent Fawcett is unveiled as Prime Minister Theresa May and Mayor of London Sadiq Khan look on during a ceremony in Parliament Square.
the statue of women's suffrage leader Millicent Fawcett is the first monument of a woman and the first designed by a woman, Turner Prize winning artist Gillian wearing OBE, to take a place in Parliament Square. Prince William arrives at the Lindo Wing of St. Mary's Hospital with his children Prince George and Princess Charlotte after his wife Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge, gave birth to a son. Kenya's Eliud Kipchoge crosses the finish line to win the men's elite race at the London Marathon 2018. Team England athletes during the Commonwealth Games Team England Parade in Victoria Square, Birmingham. Varun Chopra of Essex during the Specsavers County Championship Division 1 match between Essex and Lancashire at the Chelmsford County Cricket Ground. The game is being played in the warmest April temperatures in 70 years. I looked at my face. I've always liked my face, if I'm honest. We have been through a lot together. I look like my mum, dad, son and daughter all mixed into one. There's are all faces I love, so I said, 10. The doctor nodded wisely, as only a man getting paid £300 for a chat can. He explained that my face would look different to how it does now if he filled it and froze it. If I liked my face 10 out of 10, then I was perhaps just anxious about being on a primetime TV show and I was looking to the wrong thing to fix my anxiety. I think your issues are more emotional, he continued. For now. My advice would be to meditate, find emotional coping strategies for adventure into the unknown and come back here when you are 60. If you still want cosmetic enhancement then, we can discuss it. But I will charge a lot more by then. What do you think? I think you're a very good doctor, I said. £300 is a lot of money to spend on being told you're just panicking, relax, but in this case, worth every penny. That said, I do sometimes wonder if he was actually a porter having a laugh while the real doctor was at lunch.